Okay, in today's lesson we're going to look at drawing a picture using a grid. So, first of all, we're going to get the picture that you created last week, put in the grid or the top of the photograph uh, on pic uh, photo P, and we're going to use that as our reference. So as you can see here, I'm starting in the top uh, left hand corner, and I'm just drawing where I see his hair start and end on the photograph, and I'm going to place it roughly in the same positions on the bigger gridded picture. Down the bottom here, I'm just tracing out where his neck and chin join. I'm really looking at the horizontal and vertical lines of each box. Where one line stops and starts. So I can see there, that chin ends halfway along that horizontal line. And I'm trying to join it up. Here I can see it goes from there to about a quarter of the way up. And then tracing it along there, it goes up to about a third of the way along that horizontal line. Press lightly. This is the key to good art. You can see that I've made a slight mistake, but I'm not worried about it yet because A, I haven't pressed too hard, and B, well, I'm probably thinking the hair is going to cover it later. So there, I'm just correcting it, looking, and now looking where the hair sort of comes in from just up from that horizontal line and going up to just along that vertical line before it hits the other horizontal line. I'm drawing in each bit of detail now on the hairline, but I'm not filling it with every bit of detail. What I'm doing there is I'm just giving a rough idea of where things stop and start. Or start and stop. So, keep working, keep drawing around. So I'm just tracing in now the, uh, the shape of the face and the hair along the face. So nothing too complicated, just tracing those basic lines. Coming in here is where I'm gonna look to where the ear starts. So there's the hair, just finishing off. And I'm going to look at where it starts and finishes on those lines that I'm giving myself. The neck there, looking for where it goes from that right down there, from a quarter of the way along the horizontal line, and where it goes down on the vertical lines there where it ends. It's almost like a dot to dot. You're using the grid, like a mathematical grid reference. If you split it up into just is it halfway, is it a third, or is it a quarter, it's got an easy way to do it. So when I'm looking here, I might be thinking, right, that eye is about, it starts about a third of the way up and it's coming down to about halfway. And I'm just connecting the lines. So all the time I'm just looking at one square at a time. If you try and do the whole face, it can become quite you know, overwhelming. And you end up sort of uh, just trying to guess too much. But if you take it one square at a time and just look at how far, how big is that eye in that square? most common thing in the world is to draw the eyes a little bit too big because they're such an important thing for us as, as human beings. We look to the eyes all the time. But in reality, they're not always that big. Now, if we look at this picture here that I'm drawing of Bruce Lee, his eye is taken up less than one square. It's a small area on that one square and just drifts into the other one a little bit. Bit of luck with the nostril. When I'm drawing it, on the vertical line on the left-hand side, it's actually where the nostril ends. <laughs> exactly the same on the right hand side is also where the nostril ends. So it's easy for me to see where to start and finish with the nose. Mouth the same. It starts just over the, the vertical line and then goes across and well about a quarter of the way into the other uh, the other box it finishes. Each time I'm referencing how big I should draw uh, each thing like the lips uh, compared to the box size it's in. So I'm looking at the, the little box on the photograph and I'm looking at the box on my page. This grid up method is an excellent way of drawing things. Not only because you can draw it accurately to the same scale, but also you could have a small photograph, draw the grid over it, then draw a grid to the same ratio on a wall and copy a small photograph right up to a wall size. Now, in this, if the, we use the same grid that we've got here, that would be four squares across, six squares down. As long as they were each squares, and you had four squares going across your wall and six squares going down, you could copy each square and it would be an accurate drawing. Okay, we're gonna keep going down here, tracing the hair and the outline. And the idea is you just to put in a bit of detail and draw it as well as you can. Add in eye, the, the eyelids, Add in sort of, if you can see them, the iris and the, uh, the pupil on the eyes. Making sure those pupils are in the right place. That's a real key thing as well. Drawing in detail where the nostrils are. 
and coming down to the lips, drawing the sort of cracks and creases in the lips that you normally see. It gives some indication of where tone's going to be. But here's the thing. We're going to save the tone for the next lesson. Watching this video and then you drawing it out should take you a good hour. If you do finish early and you're feeling confident, yes, by all means, you can carry on with it and enjoy it and do the shading. But I'm going to go over the shading next week. And just to show you sort of how much difference tone can make to a picture. How much more realistic and 3D you can make something by doing very dark tones to very light tones and having a good tonal range. Not scribbling, shading gently and smoothly. Okay, I think you can see me just finishing up this picture here. Just adding the last bit of detail before I leave it to the next process. Okay, I think I've done pretty well here. I'm quite happy with my image. And uh, well, it's over to you now, so good luck.